Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Disney Springs and we are going to be trying the new cookie of the month at Gideon's Bakehouse and I am so excited because they have new coffees and cake slices all for Valentine's Day and then on top of that Disney Springs is celebrating soulfully for Black History Month and they have some great dishes at all different locations so I figured we'd come on down, eat some snacks, do some shopping and have a fancy Disney Springs kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. This is probably the earliest I've ever been to Disney Springs. It is 10 a.m. and nothing opens until 11. So it's kind of cool to be able to walk around and see it's so empty. Gideon's Bakehouse actually has two cookies of the month for February. They have the Eternal Flame, which is kind of like a spicy cookie. It's a chocolate cherry spicy cookie. And I'm not the biggest fan of spicy cookies, uh, but I've had it in the past. But they have a new strawberry cookie that's like a cookie. It's like a box of chocolates. And I've never had that before. So I'm excited to do our little cookie comparison and uh, go to Summer House on the Lake, the new cookie spot, and uh, see uh, which cookie is the best cookie for me in the month of February and I'm excited it's gonna be fun because they're both good spots honestly since we're down here maybe we should just get the cookie at summer house uh, by the lake first if the cookie bar is open looks like it is it looks like they got a line too oh cookie bar entrance this way now, just like I said before, uh, the cookie competition, this is just friendly. They're both great spots. They both have good cookies. But I just kind of fancy calling myself a cookie connoisseur. And uh, we're not going to just base it off taste alone. I think this time we're going to be doing uh, theming. So like if they have a special cookie or the theming of it. And also uh, selection and then the cookie. So we'll give a point each and whoever has the best uh, two out of three uh, wins. Or the best out of three. Look at all the cookies in here. They've got peanut butter, chocolate walnut, birthday cake, oatmeal scotchy, which is my personal favorite cookie here. But we're not getting that cookie today. They got a creamsicle cookie here. They got an apple oatmeal, which looks amazing. Look at that. And then a lemon cookie. And then they also have a special cookie of the month. It's a red velvet cookie for Valentine's Day. I think I might get the red velvet cookie. It actually looks fancy. And this fudge bomb looks nice. Yo, Summer House on the Lake is pulling some stuff right now. I thought I would have to find like a cookie that was kind of relatable to Gideon's, but now we've got our seasonal cookie off. A seasonal cookie, they got a seasonal cookie, they got a seasonal cookie, and it looks pretty amazing. Okay. I talked about theming before. You know, Gideon's is amazing theming, but look, they actually made this red velvet cookie into a heart shape it looked like i think they look big and it's so soft it's basically falling apart in my hands like i it's so delicate like i'm afraid like i can't even break this cookie you ready watch oh <laughs> it's literally just so soft and delicious oh i'm lucky i've got a little napkin here but anyway here we go oh wow Man, oh man, this is an amazing cookie. So soft, so full of flavor. Like it's literally falling apart. It's so good. I love it. And the theming was great. I can't wait to compare this cookie to uh, the uh, internal flame or the eternal flame over at Gideon's. So we'll make our way up there. And uh, afterwards, we'll break it down by category and see who has the best cookie of the month for February. And like I said, when I say best cookie of the month, I'm talking about my personal preference. You know what I mean? I'm a Gideon stan, uh, but like, you know, like I said, last time I came here, uh, Gideon's had the better cookie, Summer House on the Lake didn't have the better cookie, but then I came and got an oatmeal scotchy from somewhere else on the lake, and that cookie was one of the best cookies I've ever had in my life. And now this cookie, it's impressive. So two times I've had great cookies from Summer House on the Lake. Two times. Now I found like I'm the cookie monster mixed with Count Dracula. Two cookie. Ah, ah. Ho, ho, ho. I think I'm going to start coming to Disney Springs earlier in the morning. This is amazing. It's not crowded. It's beautiful. Look at that. You can see the cars driving in the water, the boat there. Nobody's on the bridge. This is nice. 
this weekend has been amazing because I was at MegaCon uh, and I had a little meet and greet at the Roosevelt's booth and then we had Masha Isley and I went to the Pro Bowl. Well, I was like, I went to the Pro Bowl, so I'm a little late with the Cookie of the Month update, but uh, I'm glad I got to come here and I'm glad I'm wearing this fancy shirt. It's uh, the Roosevelt from the D100, but it's a special color edition. I think this was at Hallmark or one of the stores and it kind of fits perfect for Valentine's Day. You got Mickey and Minnie dancing and it's red. I like it. It's very fancy. Here it is, Gideon's Bakehouse. I have no idea what the line is going to be like on the other side of this wall. I'm kind of crossing my fingers and hopefully it's not that busy. Oh, okay, it's a long line. It's a very, very long line. Holy moly. I am excited to try the new strawberry cookie at Gideon's. Uh, all I've ever had was the spicy eternal flame one. And now we've got something a little bit, a little bit on my side. So, I mean, this is going to be cool. This is going to be a good cookie competition. We made it to the back of the line. Probably about uh, 25, 30 minutes from here, I'd say. And here it is, the menu for February at Gideon's Bakehouse. I love the artwork on the front, and I love how they give you a little story about the character, too, and the cookie. And as you can see, we have cookies, the strawberry delight. Strawberry cookie filled with dark chocolates and covered in strawberry-infused sugar. And then the eternal flame here, it is a dark chocolate cherry cooked uh, cookie laced with ancho, cayenne, and cinnamon, and then topped with chocolate covered cherries. And then they also have the fire and ice cold brew. So I think we're gonna get all the cold brews and I think we're gonna get the cold brew and the cookies. We made it into Gideon's. It was just about a 35 minute wait. And uh, yeah, look at it in here. Cookies made from scratch and a recipe that took 15 years to perfect. I love the inside here, I love all the paintings. And then they've got a lot of merchandise down here. I never get to show you guys a full kind of tour of Gideon's itself. But it's really cool. The theming is on point. You can take a look at all of the cookie flavors Gideon's has to offer. And right there is the Eternal Flame, along with my personal favorite, the Banana Walnut Chocolate Chip. And then a couple more cookies on this side. And then the cake slices, too. They always got good cake slices. The selection here is good. Look at all the books up there too. Look at all them books. We have officially obtained the goods. I've got the fire and ice cold brew. We've got the new strawberry delight. It's basically a box full of Valentine's chocolates in a cookie, which I'm excited to try. This one I've never had before. And then we have the eternal flame, a dark chocolate cherry topped cookie laced with ancho, cayenne, and cinnamon. Look at that. Yo, we got so many cookies. We rolling cookie deep here. Look at that. Oh, now I think it's moving. My camera's moving. It's doing its thing. Okay. All right. Let's get to the cookie business. Let's uh, dive in. Oh, which one should I start with? I'm going to go this one. I'm going to go. No. Yes. Yes. I'm going to go Eternal Flame because I've already had it before and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try the strawberry one. Uh, this one, I'm not the biggest fan of because I don't like spicy, but I appreciate the amount of effort that went into uh, making this cookie. Like, it's it's good because I like the cherries and the chocolate, but once that ancho and cayenne kicks in, it kicks in. So, here we go, look at this. And that's how the cookie crumbles. Solid, look at that. You wanna make sure you get a nice spot with the, the cherry in it, right there. Can you see it? It's like a chocolate covered cherry. That's the bite. <laughs> so here we go. This cookie is like a drama series because you get all of these different flavors, kind of like emotions. At first, you try that sweet, delicious chocolate, and then you get the uh, cherry, fruity flavor, and then you get hit with the ancho pepper, and then it's a little bit spicy, and then the cayenne kicks in, and you start getting maybe a little teary-eyed, and then bada-boom, you finish up with a warm touch of cinnamon to calm you down. If that sounds like an adventurous cookie, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm not that big of a spicy guy. I, you know what I mean? I'm not spicy like that. It's starting to kick in. The heat is starting to creep in. I put it at a mild, not mild, medium. Medium, because I like things mild, and this is a little bit too spicy for me. Now it's time for the strawberry delight. 
Strawberry delight. <laughs> this is like a box full of Valentine's chocolates in a cookie. And uh, yeah, I gotta break it open. Let me get a uh, uh, zoom in. There we go. Break the cookie open. Ooh, this looks so good. Look at the strawberry on the inside. I'm excited. Wow. To be honest, I was not expecting that cookie to be as good as it is. Like, <laughs> I was thinking, like, everyone's going to love this cookie. It's just me that doesn't like this cookie because it's spicy. But holy moly, this is a great cookie. This is phenomenal. Gideon stepped up their game. And now, now, I'm going to make a perfect sweet and spicy combo because instead of getting the chocolate one, I'm going to get a little strawberry with a little fire and ice cold brew. That's how you do it. I really, really thought there for a second that Summer House on the Lake was going to have a chance because I knew I wasn't going to like that spicy. But this cookie is amazing. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I think my straw blew away, just flew away with the wind. So I'm going to have to take the lid off and drink the coffee kind of from the top here. So I'm going to take a little bit of a cookie, a little strawberry cookie, and then a little bit of a coffee. Oh, it's amazing. I don't think I should have drank it off the top because it's like drinking a floater, or a, 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 like a shot on the top of a mixed drink. I think I might have gotten all the spice there. I don't know. Yep, nope, not doing that again. Personally, I love the strawberry delight, but I appreciate the complexity of the eternal flame and I can live without the fire and iced coffee. <laughs> but this right here was such a sleeper. I had no idea it was gonna be as good as it was. Now, I have to make a decision. I have to decide which one was better. S Summer House on the Lake or Gideon's Bakehouse. And I think I'm gonna compare it to that one, not that one. To be honest, I don't want Summer House on the Lake to think I don't like their cookies because I like their cookies. They're good cookies, but I gotta give it to Gideon's. That strawberry cookie was just too good. I mean, I loved it. Red Velvet cookie was better than the Eternal Flame. The uh, Summer House on the Lake uh, Red Velvet cookie was better than the Eternal Flame in my opinion, but the Strawberry Delight was better than the Red Velvet cookie for them. Uh, maybe next month, like I said, I really do like their cookies, but if I'm doing it a cookie by cookie comparison, I mean, I gotta, I gotta be legit. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do what the cookie heart says, you know? Now, if uh, Gideon's gets into the oatmeal cookie game, I don't think they're going to stand a chance against Summer House on the Lake because their oatmeal cookies, like the oatmeal uh, scotchy and the apple oatmeal, I think it'll rock Gideon's world. And I haven't eaten the apple oatmeal until the day I can use it as a comparison because I feel like that's going to be a heavy contender. Uh, but now, well, enough of the cookie business. Enough of the cookie business. It's time to actually go get uh, some soulfully food. Soulfully soul food. At the hangar bar across from Gideon's, they have a nice little menu for Celebrate Soulfully. And Chef Daphne is actually preparing this nice fried pork shoulder dish that you can come get for the month of February. This actually looks really good. Um, I might actually make my way back over, but I want to head towards Polite Pig. They have something there, and we got to come back this way. Gideon's line is still looking pretty long. Look at that. That's crazy. I'm not too sure what my plans are later on, but I might just carry this vlog over. I might go to Epcot, might go to Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, who knows? Universal, it's really great living in Florida because after you get done hanging out in the parks all day, uh, like me being a YouTuber or a content creator, I just go back out to the parks to hang out with my friends. So I might just carry this vlog along and bring it along with you guys after we get all the nice snacks here at Disney Springs. I always like coming out to the water and watching the Ampy cars actually drive around Disney Springs. Look how beautiful it is today. It's a nice day, isn't it? Might be a little bit rain. Those clouds aren't looking the happiest. Looks like we got some angry clouds in the area. Also, I want to stop into Amaretz too. They always have specials going on for the month. You know, I like Disney Springs. I feel like a lot of other like parks should probably get on it. You know, like monthly specials, it gives people a reason to come returning. I've been coming to Gideon's 
now I think three years maybe? Well, since the very beginning, since the very first opening month at Gideon's, I was there for the cookie of the month and I've been there ever since then. So, like I said, it's, it's a great concept. And Moretz have a uh, Proud Snacks Petite Cake. Look at that, like the Proud Family, I would assume. Oh yeah, it is the Proud Family. Layers of chocolate chiffon, peanut butter mousse, and honey roasted peanuts. It's $22 for that cake though. Down here you can actually see the chef that uh, created the dish. Oh, it says right here, inspired by her favorite show, The Proud Family. It looks so unique. I'm gonna see what it looks like in real life. In real life. Look at them back there actually making chocolate covered strawberries and cakes for uh, Valentine's Day coming up. And here is the Proud Family Cake or the Proud Snacks Petite Cake. It looks really cool, doesn't it? $22 and I already got a bag full of cookies. I got a bag full of cookies. I think I'm just gonna go back to the polite pig and try the uh, pork shoulder sliders. But I do want to stop at Sprinkles to get Gracie her pup cake, so we might as well cut that way. Like, we really are just doing like a little figure eight here. There it is, Sprinkles. Holy moly, there's actually people inside. Those pup cakes must be really catching on. Huh. Are these pup cakes? So it's going to be a red velvet, a chocolate chip, and a vanilla. Oh, wait, are those pumpkins then? <laughs> I literally was like, you have Valentine's Day pumpkins? Oh, okay. Do, if I buy them, can I just buy them here? Or? I got you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got so excited because I thought that they had uh, like Valentine's Day pumpkins. But I got Gracie her pumpkins, and now we can add it to the bag. We can add it to the bag. Pumpkins have been obtained. I'm actually a little worried because I don't know if uh, we uh, are going to have enough time to do uh, the hangar bar. The lines have been pretty big, like long today. Like honestly, it's uh, not a holiday weekend or anything. It just seems uh, busy down at the springs. The line for Gideon's is still exactly where it's at. They didn't go to the virtual queue yet. So all these people are probably waiting at least an hour, at least an hour to get those cookies. We're going to have to save hangar bar for another day. The wait is just a little bit too long at the moment. I want to head home before this rain comes, go see Gracie, and then maybe head out to a park. And we got to give Gracie her pupcakes too. There she is. Guess what I got for you? I got some pupcakes. Yes, you want one right now? Yeah, we can give you one right now. You want one? Oh, sit. Good girl. Here we go. Yo, Gracie loves these pupcakes for real though. She always flips them over. Watch, she won't eat the top. She'll flip that over. Watch. <laughs> Who's a good girl? Yeah, you're a good girl. Go ahead, eat your pupcake. Speaking of pupcakes, look at this beautiful artwork someone made of Gracie watching me eating pupcakes on the carpet. Like, how cool is that? Thank you so much, Red Roach uh, Intrusion. Uh, they came to uh, Megacon, and uh, I think she was one of the vendors there, and she brought it over, and I love it. So I wanted to show you guys. I can't wait to hang it up on my wall. Thank you again so much. Gracie looks amazing, and the pupcakes look so good. You did a great job. Now that Gracie got her pup cakes, I decided to make a little quick trip to Epcot. Ma, over in Mexico, they actually have a special drink for Festival of the Arts that's not on the menu. It's a very like artsy margarita. So I wanna go get that and show you because I think it's interesting to have something that nobody knows about. Like, I don't think anybody is talking about this drink. And then also maybe ride a ride or two or get something to eat, maybe a little late dinner, who knows? There she is. Our spaceship Earth. Honestly, today turned out to be a beautiful day. And as long as the rain stays away, I think we might catch a beautiful sunset. A beautiful Epcot sunset. I brought a hoodie with me because it might drop down to the 40s tonight. 40s in Epcot. Can you believe it? I mean, I'm used to just like, you know, warm, hot, sweaty Epcot days. But I'm taking advantage. I'm breathing it all in. I'm taking advantage of this cold weather. 
always a nice shot when you walk into the park or when you walk into World Showcase and catch the monorail going by. Look at that. I think I'm just gonna make my way right on into World Showcase and go get the margarita I was talking about over at the uh, Festival of the Arts booth in Mexico. It's really cool because it changes colors. That's why I want to get it before it starts getting dark out. I want to see all the colors. The margarita that I was talking about is called the Art Grita, like an art margarita. <laughs> and you can see it's not on the menu. Uh, and uh, the only way to get it is to go up to the kiosk here and uh, tell them the uh, special password, which is on Instagram. It's on La Cava's Instagram. You got to find the password and then you get this uh, special margarita that has like uh, has special effects. So we're going to get it. I got the secret drink. The secret drink. Here it is, the fancy margarita. Look at how cool this is. Comes with a little paintbrush, and this is the name of uh, the uh, margarita itself. And the art is done by Dom Corona, which happens to be the password. This is not on the menu uh, over there, like I said. Uh, and when you get up there, you gotta say Dom Corona. And uh, that's how they'll uh, give you the drink. No exceptions. You got to know the password. And then you get to make it change colors. Look at this. I'm not going to lie. I thought, that the sh I thought that the paintbrush was a straw. So for a while there, I was like this. And nothing was coming up. But yeah, it's just a paintbrush. So here, now we got to try it. I was perusing uh, La Cava's Instagram and I came across this secret. Who's ready for the secret? Dom Corona uh, margarita. And look at what it does. It has special effects. It turns it into like a uh, NFT. How cool is that? You can actually buy this cup and you gotta say the password. It's uh, Dom Corona. I also love how they actually put the little artwork on there uh, with the clothespin. You get to keep the clothespin too. You get to keep the cup and the clothespin and the paintbrush. I keep setting it down because I think I'm going to sip on it out of the straw. I, I literally probably went to go drink out of this paintbrush at least five times. Enough of the margarita business. Look at how beautiful this sunset is right now. A nice little cozy sunset here at uh, Epcot. Like I said, oh wait a second, we can't even walk that way. I gotta go this way. I was about to walk right over that way. I don't know what they got going on over there. I decided to backtrack and since we had a little margarita, decided to come into Mexico and uh, go ride the Grand Fiesta Tour. This is my go-to ride, especially because you can always count on it being like a 10 minute wait maybe. Hopefully it's a 10 minute wait. It is pretty busy in the park. Look at La Cava over there. I feel like this is like the only time I've ever seen like a wait wait. I mean, it's not too bad, probably like 10 minutes, but usually I'm like, ah, oh, it's so nice to just walk right on. I gotta come back and eat here too. Look at how beautiful that is. And that's real fire in those candles. None of that fake stuff here at uh, St. Anne Helen. Only the good stuff. We're lucky enough to get the front row. Look at this. Lucky boat number 27. I'm excited to see how this camera does actually in the low light too. I think I have a low light function. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
This looks like a good time. <laughs> I wish the boat's backed up and you get stuck here. Look at those high-tech fireworks right there. Beautiful. The Grand Fiesta tour was so nice and I think the new camera did pretty well. I was trying to be quiet so I could see how the audio was picking up. Uh, but now we made our way back up to the front and I think we're going to start making our way out and maybe hit up a ride on the way out. I didn't get any dinner tonight yet, but I ate a lot of cookies and I got some cookies at home. You can count on good figment for a five minute wait. So that's where we're heading next. I feel like Epcot, I mean not Epcot, I feel like Figment is actually the king of the low wait time. I mean Grand Fiesta Tour is always going to be very popular because it's in the Mexico Pavilion, but I forget, I think sometimes people forget that good old Figment's over here. And Professor Wayne Zelinski. Also don't forget about Buzz Lightyear, he's here too. Look at him there, chilling out. Staying back there, good old Buzz. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our special drive through open house. I'm Dr. Nigel Channing, Chairman of the Imagination Institute. Hello, on your tour you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. It's over here. Take some more. I think we're getting stuck. Now here's a real open house. Come on in. Riding journey into imagination was a good idea. Now I think we're gonna head into the land and see what Soren or the land is gonna be at. Well, it's good to know living with the land has a zero minute wait. I don't know about Soren, but we'll see. Look at that, nobody down there. They're all in awesome planet. Look at that empty queue. If we wait any longer, we might be able to get a boat to ourselves. I think we're even gonna get the front row maybe, and even our own boat actually. Oh, I can smell the water and hear it already. It's time to live with the land. It's so dark on living with the land right now. They turn the lights off and it's kind of scary. Look at it back there. You can't even see the sea bass. Would you look at all those sunflowers there? Soon they're gonna be taller than me. Can't wait to keep checking on those. And the cannoli. There is somebody inside currently working inside the lab, inside the land. Look at that. What's he doing? Looks like he's got a sample there. Look at 
That's kind of cool. Yeah. I think we got a lot accomplished today. And now uh, time to head home and call it a night and see Gracie Girl. Also, I got a little surprise cookie review for you uh, at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but now it's time to head home. And now we are back home. It was a fun day at Epcot. And like I mentioned, I have a surprise cookie review because when I was at Disney Springs, I ran into some friends who actually own a little bakery up in New Jersey. And uh, they have like Disney inspired uh, treats. It's called Once Upon a Pastry. And you can find them uh, on Instagram, Once Upon a Pastry. And they do custom cookies, cakes, and more. A little figment. And then also they did uh, a little like uh, art uh, for Festival of the Arts. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, you guys have to check them out. I think, And it was so nice to meet you. Thank you for the cookies. I think it's so awesome. Here, I'm going to open up a little figment actually. In true Mickey fashion, ears first. Honestly, I could have... I, like somebody could have handed me this cookie and I could have swore it was made at Disney. Like look at it. It honestly looks like figment. I love this. I think this is so cool. And I checked out their Instagram. They have a lot of really cool stuff including Linzer cookies. I saw that they made Linzer cookies and I was like wow that's awesome. But yeah very good cookies. Make sure you guys check them out. I got a bunch of them. And this one has little hidden Mickeys on it. And with that, I think we are done here today. It was a lot of fun running around Disney Springs, trying some of the cookies, and then hanging out at Epcot. You know, you couldn't ask for a better day. So, anywho's, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye! I dropped my cookies.